Welcome back to my channel FBVI and today we're going to be doing a review specifically we're going to be doing a review on the Hota D6 Pro smart charger so what do you get in the box in the box it comes with a sticker it comes with a manual kind of like a quick start guide it comes in English and Chinese and you get the AC power cord for the back and lastly obviously you get the charger so the weight on this bad boy is 556 grams people may think that the weight is not important but the weight is important because the size of this charger you may want to take it out in the field and also the capabilities of the charger so as it relates to capabilities you obviously see the xt60 in the back that lets you plug in a light bulb and you can charge your batteries in the field you have uh, AC in in the back also, so that if you want to plug it into your wall at home, you can. Other things this has is a USB 5 volt 2.1 amp port, micro USB so that you can update the charger. And I'm not sure if I mentioned this before, but the charger, as you see, has two channels. So you get balance ports for each and you get XT60s to plug in your balance boards or your battery straight into if you decide to. It also comes with a channel button and a scroll wheel, but they call it like the speed shuttle key or something like that. So say for instance, I want to go on a day to fly. So let's start with my goggle battery. I would obviously first power on the charger. We see that it says DC 650 watts, DC 650 watts and 15 amps. And the weird thing about how they said it is that it's 650 watts, but split into the two channels. So it's 325 watts each, but it's 15 amps for each channel. It's kind of weird how they did it. So the basics of charging a light bulb. So what you'll do is you plug in your light bulb. And once you have that plugged in, you're going to hit the channel button until it's on the channel that your battery is on. And you see that there's a readout for the cells and the cell voltages and things like that. I want to charge this light bulb because I'm going out in the field. So I'll hit charge. I hit the channel. So I hit. Whew. Yanking is hard. Sorry. I'll hit the channel. I'll hold the channel button. And when I hold the channel button, what will come up is the task settings. So I'll go all the way up to the top and hit select task and I see that at the top is power supply other task settings that this has is um, discharge external discharge I don't know much about that but what I believe it means is that you plug a light bulb into the back and then the light bulbs in the front can discharge into that light bulb. storage obviously I spoke about that already balance is basically if you have your light bulb cells at a place where you like them already you can just balance in between them Charge is the one I want to use, so I hit charge. I go down to battery type, and we can see that it has a plethora of different battery types that you can use if you decided to. But I'm going to stick to LiPo because that's the battery that I have plugged in right now. So I go down to cell voltage, and I see that I can charge it to a specific cell voltage that I want from 4 volts all the way up to 4.25 volts. But the middle ground is the safest, which is 4.2. And this is the voltage that most LiPo batteries are when they're fully charged. So just leave it at that because if you go up or down any, you might mess with the functionality of the cells and you don't want to mess with that. Hit 4.2 volts, go down to cell count and you see that you can charge from 1 to 6S batteries. But I have a 3S plugged in right now. So I hit 3S, current setting. That you can go all the way up to 15 amps as I said before per channel and it can go all the way down to 0.1 amps but to stay safe I typically charge all of my batteries at 1 amp so I'll hit 1 amp and I'll press start task and just like that it'll start to charge when it's charging it's yellow when it's finished charging it's green and when it's balancing the cells because this charger it balances the cells after it's finished charging them so that it doesn't have to micromanage each of the cells which is really cool so when it's micromanaging the cells is blue so like i said let me show you guys what a day of charging would be like for me so obviously i already have the goggle battery charging and what i would do is select the drones i would go with my unfinished drone bill of course and i'll take my tiny boot 
I have a three inch and that takes four S850s. I have three of these. And I have a few of my tiny batteries. The cool thing about the charger, like I said, is that it is dual channel. So I can charge my goggle battery and then plug in my balance board. And then I'll be able to plug in my three inch batteries, which is the four S850s. And I'll plug those in one by one. Now I have all of my 4S LiPo's plugged in and what I can do is I can even take this little charger for my LiPo batteries and plug it into the USB part and plug this in, plug this in, plug this in, and plug this in. And now I have all of my batteries for the day charging. My camera just died, which is always a great time. Anyways, let's get back to the video. You just got back from the day of flying and you realized that your goggle batteries are more than 3.8 volts and you need to get them down to storage voltage because you won't be using them for a while. So what you do is you go through the same sequence as you were going through before and instead of selecting charge, this time you can select. So I was just editing the video and I realized that I said the wrong thing. I said that you should go to this and hit discharge, but instead of hitting this Instead of hitting discharge, you can just go to storage voltage and put it automatically to storage voltage. You see it says cell voltage 3.8 and that's the right voltage. There's this thing called power supply and it's really cool what it can do. What you do is you go to power supply, you select your output voltage and whatever output voltage you select, that's what is going to put out, which makes perfect sense. You can also select the output power. If I left it at 100 watts, I feel like that would be fine. And I hit start taps. And now basically this is just going to get all the way up to five volts and try to maintain about that volt. I can plug this in and say I want to connect my receiver. I can connect my receiver and bind it there rather than waiting until it's in the bill. As you can hear, I'll just move on to the pros and cons. This charger is now discharging my goggle battery and I don't know if you can hear it but it's very loud it sounds like it's about to take off yeah. some more cons I recognize was that the scroll wheel feels very cheap and it sounds very cheap I don't like that and another thing is that there are a little bit of screen delays and it's very obvious it's not like a clean swoop this time the camera ran out of space let me just make this quick while we're in system settings you can change the brightness of the screen from high all the way to low you can take wireless charging on and off and I'm sure that you heard in the last few clips that while I was using the charger the volume was off but I turned it on and you can change that from low to high high does not need to be that high and the completion signal you can change it so that if your charger is done charging your light bulb it will remind you once if you have it on single but if you have it on repeat then it'll just keep going until you plug out the back i believe that's the end of the video hope you guys enjoyed i really recommend the charger it's a great charger this is probably going to be my main charger for a very long time links will be below so this was a failed build but um, I'm going to try to do a little update on it. Thank you for coming to my channel. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. And um, yeah. And you can plug this in, in the field. If you have a larger XT, if you have a large XT60 battery,